Thanks, Chris. Good to be with you. Well, some lawmakers, like uh, Congressman Walsh, won't be there at tonight's presidential speech, but it is a crucial one. And what do Americans want to hear? Mark Morial is the president and CEO of the National Urban League. Let me Chris, I'll just tell you, that was a disgusting performance to me by what do you think member of, of members Congress. Of Congress and I'm going to tell you this. Show up. The, uh, respect for the presidency, respect for democracy, and respect for the fact that the nation is in a crisis. This is not a time for political gamesmanship. This is not a time for uh, partisan uh, pittering and pattering. This is a time for the nation's leaders to come together about a bold and imaginative job plan. We have at the National Urban League a 12-point jobs plan that we've recommended to the Congress uh, and indeed to the President. The key... So from what you're hearing, is he going to hit on the kinds of things that you believe are crucial? Because I've, uh, over the last several weeks, heard from so many Democrats, so many progressives, he needs to go bold. I believe boldness and imagination is what's needed at this point in time. We're facing a slowing economy, a recovery that's not created jobs. Uh, three important recommendations are direct job creation and aid to cities and counties. For 10 straight months, state and local governments have shed jobs. That's offset job creation in the private sector. Number two, the Urban Jobs Act. We need a targeted approach to those parts of the nation. Many of them are urban, but some are rural and suburban, where unemployment is really, really high, 16, 17, 18. 19%. I'd like to see the president address that. I like the idea, the Urban League supports the idea of an infrastructure bank and a commitment to building the infrastructure of the nation, but it shouldn't be a highway paving program. It needs to include uh, building the infrastructure of cities, schools, parks, playgrounds, libraries, and yes, with the floods that have taken place, with the hurricane, there's also, I think, an opportunity to put people back to work, uh, rebuilding sewers, flood control, and drainage systems across the nation. So there, we've got ideas. There's also, though, a Pew poll out that, that probably is a little disheartening because it shows that no matter what the plan, infrastructure spending, cutting taxes, People basically don't think it's going to help a lot. Are we really talking about a crisis in confidence and that a big part of this plan is not just the specifics, but the president getting people to hope again? I think it's about a tangible plan that really addresses the problem of joblessness and unemployment. And I hope the president is bold and imaginative and isn't thwarted by the idea that he will propose some things that his opponents. You saw uh, this congressman, uh, respectfully, from, from Illinois, uh, who pretty much said, we will not support anything that President Obama uh, proposes. You called his hand by saying, where is your real plan, not a plan made up of a political ideological tick sheet, but a real plan. So I think the president has to re-inspire confidence, but tangible, uh, a tangible plan is more important tonight than I think rhetoric. I want to uh, play for you a little clip. Matt Lauer um, played this morning. Uh, right after he became president, this was part of Matt's interview. I'm at the start of my administration. One nice thing about uh, uh, the situation I find myself in is that I will be held accountable. Uh, you know, I've got four years. You need to know quickly how people and, feel and, about and, what's and happened. That's exactly right. And, and you know, a year from now, I think people uh, are going to see that uh, we're starting to make some progress, but there's still going to be some pain out there. If I don't have this done in three years, then there's going to be a one-term proposition. If I don't have this done in years, uh, tonight, with this speech and with what comes out of it, are we looking at the difference between a one-term and a two-term president? Uh, no, I don't think uh, a second term turns on a single speech or a single initiative. I think what's more important is... For but doesn't it turn on jobs? It will turn on jobs, but also an election is a competition. It's about competing ideas and competing plans. So while the president will have a plan tonight, uh, I don't think you'll hear anything tangible out of his opposition. You'll, you'll hear efforts to tear down his plan. I want the American people uh, in listening tonight to recognize that I think the president is going to put a plan on the table. My hope, my encouragement, uh, and, uh, is that the plan is going to include boldness, it's going to include targeted provisions. But I think what you've heard thus far is a lot of negative rhetoric, but no alternative plan that's meaningful and would create jobs. So elections are about competition. They're not simply about an incumbent president uh, and his record. They're about an incumbent president, indeed, and 
what his opposition may offer or what his competitor may offer. Mark Morial, it's always good to have you in Thank the studio. You. Thank you good. so much. Thanks.